Hey guys, I want to do a real quick video because I did a video not that long ago where I was basically just talking about how there was a company that was helping one of the folks on our website, newhvacguide.com. I'll put a link to that down below. But they were helping them and we were kind of going through the chronological order of things. And that, I'm going to elaborate on that in this video. But basically what was happening in that video is they were trying to win the customer's business and then do a heat low calculation. There might be a reason for that. Maybe they just didn't want to do a heat low calculation for free for that customer to take that information and go to someone else and get their system installed, which is fair. But I believe if you're seeing this video, there is a chronological order, a timeline of how things should take place in my opinion. And we go more into depth in this on my website, newhvacguide.com. We go into more depth on how the chronological order of things and, and how some things should be done before other things. But there are four things that I believe that should take place before you pick a heating and air system. And not only are there four things, I think there's a chronological order on how all those things should happen. I think there's, there's a step one and there's a step four and you shouldn't be doing step four or three or two before you do step one. So we're gonna go through that. But let me just say, obviously there's exceptions to every rule. I don't think there's a cookie cutter way of doing this. I just think that if you use this order, it will save you some headaches. And so let's go through this. The first thing is, let's just say you're building a house and you should have some prints made uh, to build that house or you already have a house, you're doing an addition, you're getting a system added, whatever. We're not talking about replacements in this video. We're talking about systems that are new to a space in some way, shape or form. And so when you are doing those things, I believe there's a chronological order of how things should be done with that as well, but I'm not a carpenter, I'm not an architect, so I'm not gonna pretend to be one. But in that process of things, as you're getting all that put together, I believe there's some prints that should be made. There's some blueprints that should be made and offered to you that you're gonna wanna offer and show to your contractors. And I believe that most of the good engineers or architects are going to provide you, the homeowner, with some sort of mechanical drawings. Now, that being said, I think there are a lot of them out there that do not do mechanical drawings for a number of different reasons. Maybe they just assume that the heating and air company is the expert at that and they're not gonna touch that. Or, you know, they don't wanna be on the hook if something's wrong. I, I don't really know why, but I do know that there's a lot of times folks will have blueprints for their house and they'll have everything but the mechanical drawings. So they'll have the foundation prints and the walls and all that. And then they'll have another page for the electrical and another page for the plumbing, but no pages for the mechanical. So if you don't have that, what do you do? If you're the homeowner, you, you did step one, you got prints made, but step two didn't get done for one reason or another. They didn't do mechanical drawings. So what should you do? I'll tell you. And here's the one that people mess up all the time, in my opinion. I believe step two is to have a professional heat load calculation done by somebody. If you have to pay for it, pay for it. It will stop so many headaches from happening before they ever happen if you just do that correctly. So get your prints made you know, from your architect or engineer or whoever that's designing the prints for your new home or new addition or space or whatever. And the second one would be if they did not do mechanical drawings that the heating and air company can base their pricing off of, then you need to at least get a heat low calculation done. So that would be step two. Step three after that, would be to decide what kind of system you want. And if you're deciding what kind of system you want, I'm not gonna go through it in this video, but there are different parts of the country where certain systems make more sense than others. There's also a such thing as customer preferences. You might prefer a certain type of system over another for one reason or another. So you might decide if you live in these, you know, if you live in this part of the country that it makes more sense to do a heat pump instead of an AC or, you might decide to do a, a, a furnace instead of electric air handler, or you might do a dual fuel system with a heat pump and a furnace with you know the gas backup. You might decide to do a package unit or a split system. You have a lot of decisions to make there, 
And most heating and air contractors, I can tell you for me and most of my competitors, will tell you in most cases what probably makes the most sense for your home based on where in the country you are and what we're used to seeing and things like that. I would say it's as a general rule, there might be systems out there that you might read online. You might read online and say, oh, this system's the thing. This is, this is the, the business right here. But if you don't have someone in your area that can work on that kind of system, there's a particular state that I seem to get more messages from than any other state in the country about heat pumps, the systems that we install, because for some reason in that particular state, there is a lack of knowledge. Nothing wrong against those particular companies that are in that area if you can't be faulted for something you hardly ever see, right? But when those customers do install those heat pumps, maybe that's something they could have avoided. Maybe that heat pump is better, but if you don't have a company that can take care of it properly, then maybe it's not better, if that makes sense. So anyway, I'll get off of that. Prints, mechanical drawings, or heat low calculation, decide what kind of system you want. And then the final thing would be get three quotes, at least three quotes in my opinion. I think that you should get quotes from different companies that install different brands, things like that. I don't think there's any one heating and air brand that's best in every single market in the country. The brand that we sell, I think is best in our market. That's why I sell it. We're able to offer the best warranty around in our area, but I'm not so naive to think that there's other areas to think that that company might not even have a good supplier in that area or, you know, someone that can work on that system well or whatever or get parts for it. Who knows? There's no one brand that's best in every market. Get a few different quotes. And I would say forget the brand of the heating and air system. Go with whichever contractor gives you the warm fuzzies. Which one took a moment to talk to you, to answer your questions and is helping you make the best decision and go with what they recommend, okay? Does that mean that's the end all? Does that mean you're definitely not gonna have any issues? Obviously no, that, you know, there's still a possibility, but I would care more about the installer than I would the brand that they're installing. In fact, I did a whole series on that. You should check out where I talk about some of the problems that installers have when they're installing the systems. It doesn't matter what brand it is. It could be the Rolls Royce, the Bentley, version of heating and air systems, but if it's installed by somebody that's used to working on Kias, or no offense to Kia, but they're used to doing things lower class, or they just don't do things properly at all, that Rolls Royce is not gonna run right. Go get a Lexus and then go put diesel fuel into that gas tank and see if you have issues. And I don't care how good the car is, you're gonna have issues if that makes sense. So again, sorry if that video was too long, but ultimately chronological order is four things. We're gonna do prints, mechanical drawings or heat low calculation, decide what kind of system you want, and then go get your quotes. And then you can go from there. But if you're getting quotes before you even know these other things, or if you're deciding what kind of system you want before you've gotten prints to the house or whatever, I think that you're doing things a little backwards and you could have issues. I hope you don't, but you could. And then finally, if you are in the market for a new heating and air system, if you're in the Middle Peninsula or Northern Neck of Virginia, give us a call, Griffin Air. We would love to earn your business. But if you're not in our coverage area, you're somewhere else in the country and you are in the market for a new heating and air system, before you spend thousands, check out my new website, it's called newhvacguide.com. I'll put a link to it down in the comments. And this website, I basically wrote a book, made it a guide, put it on this website. And instead of having a book that would be outdated within a year or two, I'm able to constantly add things on there if new things come out. And the other thing is I've even put information on there that people in our industry don't even want you to know. So I've got a whole page called no-nos and you know just things to stay away from and so on. That being said, thanks for watching. Hit that subscribe button. We'll see you next time.